The Children's Angel. Hello, friends. My name's Daniel, and I'm going to tell you the story about the Children's Angel. At some point, all of us have imagined what heaven is like. Full of heavenly angels, guardian spirits, and souls full of goodness. Well, if you like, I'll tell you a sweet and wonderful story that has to do with heaven. There is a very old legend that there was once an angel in heaven with bright eyes and chubby cheeks, and that when it was his turn to be born as a child, he said to God. I am told that you are sending me to Earth tomorrow, and I would like to ask you a question. How will I survive? I am so small and helpless. Among the many angels, I have chosen one for you, that is waiting to take care of you. But tell me, here in heaven, I do nothing but sing and smile. I have so much fun. That's enough to be happy. Your angel will sing to you. It will smile at you every day, and you will feel love, and you will be happy. I assure you that you will always be full of joy. The angel went on. And how will I know what people are saying to me? If I do not speak the strange language that the men and women on Earth speak, God spoke comfortingly to him. Your angel will say the kindest and sweetest words to you, and with patience and love will teach you to speak. Do not worry; with the passing of time, you will learn all you need to know. To live happily, happily, happily. And what will I do when I want to talk to you? Your angel will put your hands together every day, and will teach you to pray, and you will be able to speak to me. You'll tell me lots of things. Just you wait. I have heard that on Earth there are bad men, miserable and depraved people that kidnap children. Who will defend me? The concern was reflected in the face of the little cherub. Your angel will never fail to watch over you. It will defend you, even at the expense of its own life. But it is very likely that I will always be sad because I will never see you again, God. Your angel will always speak of me to you. And will teach you the way, so you may come back to me. That way is along a marvelous and beautiful path, bathed in the brightest light you can possibly imagine. What's more, I will always be at your side. Never ever forget that. Forget that. Forget that. At that very moment, a great peace reigned in heaven. But the first earthbound voices could already be heard. The child hurriedly and anxiously said, with tears in his blue eyes, sobbing, "Dear God, please, I implore you. If I have to go now, tell me my angel's name. What is my angel called? Tell me." Do not worry about it, my angel. The angel's name does not matter. You will always call her Mum. Mum. And here ends this beautiful fable. Religious Ed, Grade One, Catechism, Your Guardian Angel, Lesson Four, My Guardian Angel. The angels are pure spirits who help God. Angels are messengers who carry messages from heaven to earth. Each person has a special angel who watches out for them. 
These are called guardian angels. You have a guardian angel. Your angel is there to protect you and keep you from evil. There are also bad angels called devils. Devils try to tempt us to do evil, but our guardian angels stop them. We should ask our guardian angel to protect us each day. Let's pray together and ask our guardian angels to protect us. Prayer to my guardian angel. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide, Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom his love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Hey Jim, what are you doing? I was drawing a house. Look! And what were you doing, Joanne? I was reading a travelogue. Good morning, children. Good morning, Uncle. What were you doing here? Uh, it's not about the homework that we are worried. Then what are you worried about? I have to give a speech tomorrow about what profession I'm going to choose when I grow up. Ha ha ha, that's great! What are you going to speak about tomorrow? Hmm, it's nothing exciting, Uncle. So what? Go on, tell me. I want to become an accountant when I grow up. And I want to become an engineer. Look at the house I drew. Hmm, that's a good one, Jim. Joanne, you need to choose the profession that you like most. I remember that Jim had told me you like to write as well. Look at this, Uncle. Joanne wrote this article and everyone loved it. Hi, Joanne, I did not know that you are a gifted writer. Uncle, I'm confused. Can I do two different things in life? Of course you can. There are many people in the world who do that. Really? Yes, we have many. Even in the Bible, one of the disciples of Jesus was an accountant, and he was a great writer too. Is it? In the Bible? Who was he? Huh, I... I too haven't heard about anyone like that. <laughs> I'm sure that you've heard of this person. Come on, think. Huh? Accountant and a writer? Hmm, who could that be? Hmm, an accountant and writer? What did he write, Uncle? All right, here's a clue. He wrote one of the Gospels during that time. Gospel was written by Matthew, Luke, Mark and John. But who among them was an accountant? Well, I do not want to hold the suspense anymore. What do you think was the profession of Matthew? Matthew was a tax collector, wasn't he, uncle? But not an accountant. You know that the job of an accountant is a respectable job today. During Jesus' time, taxes were collected by people called publicans. They did this job for the Roman rulers who ruled over Judea. Matthew was one among them, and all the Israelites hated these publicans. Matthew was a tax collector 
And one day, as usual, he was collecting the taxes from the poor. Master, do not take the entire money. This is what I'm left with to pay for my debts. If you take this money for taxes, then my whole family will starve to death. Hey, go away, old man. This is what you owe to the Roman governor. But, master, that's 20 shekels more than I used to pay. Please leave that money for my family. That is my commission, you fool. <laughs> Do I have to explain everything to you? Move aside. Next. Move aside. It's Jesus of Nazareth. Master, Master. Huh? What's happening? What is that noise about? Master, don't you know who it is? That is Jesus of Nazareth, the prophet and miracle performer. He has a large number of followers. Jesus of Nazareth? Huh? I have not heard about him. When Matthew saw Jesus, he was mesmerized, and he forgot that he was a tax collector. Oh, who could this be? His face, his face is full of heavenly radiance. Follow me, Matthew. Huh? Yes, yes, master. That day, Matthew, who was greedy for money, turned a new leaf at the call of his master. He abandoned the money at the tax booth and started following Jesus. Matthew hosted a great banquet at his house for Jesus and his disciples. Along with the disciples of Jesus, there were tax collectors and many other sinners who joined the dinner. The Pharisees, who saw Jesus and the disciples coming out of Matthew's house after the dinner, came to them and asked, Your teacher is a hypocrite. Otherwise, why would he dine with the sinners? Jesus heard what the Pharisees were saying, so he went to them and said this, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Lord, I have given up my sinful ways. I have been ruthless while collecting the taxes, and I have robbed the poor people of their hard-earned money. You have opened my eyes. I truly repent for my deeds, and I am giving away all my wealth to the poor and the needy. I can feel the vibes of the greatest treasure in the world. From today onwards, I will be the torchbearer of this brightness to the whole humanity. One day, Jesus called all his disciples to convey an important message. He said to them, Today I have chosen twelve of you as my apostles. You will proclaim to the lost sheep of Israel that the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, drive out demons, cleanse the lepers. The spirit of my father will be speaking through you. All the twelve disciples were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, what is happening to me? I can feel a new awakening in my mind. I feel, I feel more confident. Hmm, I'm now ready to face the people who used to shun and despise me. Jesus instituted the Holy Eucharist by sharing his body and blood with his apostles. He proclaimed the greatest revolutionary teaching to his apostles. Love one another as I have loved you. The time has come for me to go back to my father. Huh. I need to pass this message to as many people as I can. Lord, please help me to write about the life of my master. I want everyone to read and know about the Son of God. After the resurrection of Jesus, the apostles fearing for their life were assembled in a closed room. It was Pentecost Day. That day, the Holy Spirit descended on everyone and gave them the courage to proclaim the Word of God. They could speak in different languages. Matthew was filled with enlightenment. That day, the Holy Spirit empowered Matthew to write about the life and teachings of Lord Jesus. O oh, Almighty God, I bow down before your greatness. You have made me 
an instrument to write about the life and teachings of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for revealing to me the incidents that took place before I came, the disciple of Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And so Matthew finished writing the gospel, and he set out spreading the good news to the people. Uncle, did he travel very far to spread the teachings of Jesus? Huh. It is believed that it was Matthew who brought the gospel of Christ to Syria, Medea, Persia, and Parthia. At the time of his death, he was preaching in Ethiopia. Matthew died a martyr's death. Ethiopia was inhabited by tribes of cannibals with primitive customs and beliefs. Apostle Matthew was able to convert some of the idol worshippers to Christianity. He also founded the church and built a temple in the city of Myrmena. Uncle, is it the present-day Ethiopia in Africa? No, in fact, I forgot to tell you. Ethiopia in those days was a nation located south of the Caspian Sea. It is not the present-day Ethiopia. The Ethiopians did not believe in Jesus in spite of the many miracles performed by Matthew. One day, Jesus appeared to him and asked him to plant his staff in front of the church, which would grow into a tree bearing fruits. When the people approached the tree to see the fruits, a spring sprouted from its root and cleansed the people gathered around. Wow! They got baptized? <laughs> now listen to what happened after this. As soon as they were cleansed of their sins, they realized the power of Lord God and knelt before the church. Huh? God, please forgive me for my sins. Forgive us, my Lord. Thank you, sir. You have opened our eyes. Children, this was a moment of reckoning for the Gentile and uncivilized people. They started believing in Jesus and the words of Matthew. But, uncle, didn't it create problems for Matthew? Yes, dear. The tribal leader and ruler of the land was Fulvian, a man with unclean spirits. Furious on seeing the people getting converted to Christianity, he ordered to capture and execute Matthew. <laughs> Did you all see the faith of this magician? He spoke about a God giving eternal life. Let me see if his God will save his life. Hey! Add more wood and burn him down. Let's burn him down along with his faith. Even though they added more wood, the flames didn't grow stronger and touch Matthew. They kept adding more wood and the fire started spreading around. So Fulvian commanded his servants to set up the 12 idols they worshipped around the fire. The fire had now become so hot that it melted the idols. The flames then flared toward Fulvian. What? What's happening? Fulvian then realized his mistakes and pleaded to Matthew to save him from the fire. Oh, Master, I'm so sorry. I now realize that yours is the true God. Save me from the fire. Please, save me. You evil king. Kneel before the God and turn away from your evil ways. If you don't, then God will punish you and your people mercilessly. And as the tribe leader prayed for mercy, the fire went out. So Fulmine could not execute Matthew? But then, how did Saint Matthew die? Didn't you say that he was martyred? Yes, you did say that. Huh, that is partially correct. The fire could not burn his body, but the soul of the apostle was about to depart to heaven. Think about this. Matthew converted a whole nation just moments before his death. Jesus, my master, I have accomplished the task you had assigned to me. I have won these people for your kingdom. Now let me join you for my heavenly abode. With these words, he passed away to the surprise of all the people gathered there. 
Fulvian felt deeply sorry for the death of Matthew, but he still had an element of doubt about the holiness of Matthew. So he put the body of Matthew into an iron coffin and threw it into the sea. By doing this, Fulvian said that if the God of Matthew would preserve the body of the apostle in the water as he preserved him in the fire, then this would be a proper reason to worship this one true God. Oh, then what happened to uncle? God intervenes and works miracles. History has many instances to prove this fact. That day, Matthew appeared in a dream to Bishop Platon and asked him to go to the seashore. He told him in his dream that the bishop would find his body there. Bishop Platon went to the seashore the next day and Fulvian too joined him. When they arrived, they saw that the iron coffin was carried by the waves to the seashore. Huh? This can't be! Open the coffin right now! Master, this, this really is the prophet's body! Oh no, Master, I plead before you not to punish me for my disbelief. I do not need any more signs to trust in you, God. I'm so sorry. After Fulvian begged forgiveness of the holy apostle Matthew, Bishop Platon baptized him, giving him the name Matthew in obedience to a command of God. Soon, Fulvian Matthew ordered his subjects to follow Christianity. After the death of Bishop Platon, the Apostle Matthew appeared to him and exhorted him to head the Ethiopian church. Having become a bishop, Fulvian Matthew toiled at preaching the word of God, continuing the work of his heavenly patron. Huh? Persecuted to a preacher? Uncle, that story was mind-blowing. The work and death of Matthew was very much unknown to us. Isn't it, Jim? I only knew that he was a tax collector and the author of one of the Gospels. That's correct, Joanne! Yes, children. Matthew is known for his true narrative of the life of Jesus. He stood strong on his belief even when hung upside down over a fire. Similarly, we are tested by fire in our daily lives, and we should stand firm by our belief in God. Yes, Uncle! That's all for today. I shall come back to you tomorrow with the story of another disciple of Jesus, Jude Thaddeus. Wasn't he the one who betrayed Jesus? No, Joanne. In fact, he is greatly misunderstood because of the similarity in name with Judah Iscariot, the traitor. Oh, I know about Jude Thaddeus, the patron saint for the impossible things. That's correct, Joanne. See you both tomorrow with the story of this saint. Thank you, Uncle, and see you tomorrow. Bye, children. Save.